Hello, hello, hello. This is artist, entrepreneur, and art educator Eric McRae uh, here in my art space studio um, and here to address the issue of or the topic of uh, where do I get my prints made? I've been uh, getting peppered with tons of questions like where do you get your prints made? Where do you get your prints made? And um, here's, the, here's the simple answer. <laughs> and I'm going to sound like I'm being flipping or a smart aleck. But I go to a printer. Um, but here's, you know, let me let me break it down for you. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of printmaking since the 1980s up till now. And that's pretty much been my experience. And I'll tell you how the technology has changed. And really the answer is more so where do you need to get your prints made versus where do I get mine made. And so what has happened over the years, uh, you know, when I went to art school in the 80s, before everything went totally digital, uh, when someone said they had a print, it was more so a hand pulled fine art print. They were making etchings and silk screens and uh, lithographs and um, um, lino cuts, all these different kinds of more traditional methods of uh, making prints. And thus, those are considered fine art prints, much, uh, much more of the human element in that in that process. And so when the digital era came, well, let's go back a little bit and talk about commercial uh, offset lithography. Offset lithography uh, is a process where you're using a four color process to print images, uh, you know, your uh, magazines and uh, and books, uh, 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 color publications are printed off based off black, cyan, yellow, and magenta, and those four colors are dots, layer, and then you get an image. So back in the old days, like in the 80s, or before the digital era, uh, if a printer, let's say you are making prints of posters or whatever, uh, even prints that were signed in numbered editions, uh, uh, an artist had to print, you know, a minimum of 500 or hundreds at least of one particular image because the, the unit, the cost for the procedure was so, so great. So to justify the setup cost before you had something printed, you would usually print some huge number. And I knew artists who printed so many images, they didn't have a distribution network. Thus, they were giving these prints away as Christmas gifts and folding prints up and being facetious, but it folding a print up and put it underneath the edge of a chair, a table to level out a table. In other words, they had more prints than they could sell. Matter of fact, I've had prints I've printed that I've sold uh, enough to make back my investment, make a profit, and I still have prints uh, left over from some editions I printed uh, 25 plus years ago because um, I had to print such a huge volume to justify the cost to get the unit cost down per print. So then the digital era came about and I knew artists uh, say in the late 80s who were in color copiers became more cost efficient. Uh, they were taking uh, uh, basically what today we just simply call a color copy but it was much more expensive to make them then and the inks are pretty durable because I know I have prints uh, these color copies I made in the 1980s and the colors are still fairly good and artists were taking these prints and they were framing them and I knew one guy out of a I won't say his name but he called them laser prints and they had all these nifty names for these kind of prints and guys were framing up and selling them in droves uh, especially African American artists that was really big to in the print market uh, the, to produce prints and in the broader uh, popular art market you know you had artists produ producing all kind of stuff you take a guy like Thomas Kincaid or uh, a really popular artist who were printing you know 10,000 prints at a time uh, uh, masses of massive 100,000 prints because they had such a massive demand for their work so they were using offset lithography and then, so then you had the, the person who was doing these small edition uh, color copies. They might print 20, 30 of them at a time, and they didn't have massive uh, demand, but they could produce enough that it was cost efficient, and they could turn a profit on the sale of these works. And they were unique, and they were affordable to consumers who could not afford originals, and artists wanted to be able to make a, a living from the selling of their original work. Well, then it come along, and that fancy word known as G-Clay comes along, and no one can pronounce this. It's pronounced G clay, not glycy. It's a G clay, and it's a French term. And you know, I, I went through the G clay era while I was printing these really high dollar uh, G clays, and I would sell them to consumer, to the collectors, and the prints would be, sometimes be massive. Uh, and, and the process is more so based off the capture 
of, of digitally scanning and remastering these images. And then they, sometimes they would look as good as the painting and better than the painting. But the thing about it, you would make these super high-end prints that uh, uh, were on this really elegant, high-quality papers. They were all. It was basically like uh, producing a Bentley and trying to sell it to a Chevy crowd, or uh, you have a, a, a Maserati and you're trying to sell it to uh, a Ford crowd. Um, you know, you, your print's got to be equivalent to your marketplace. You don't try to sell Porsches at the uh, Hyundai dealership. So, you know, there's just different levels in the marketplace when it comes to prints as well as for cars or even dining. You know, there's the $100 meal and then there's the $7 meal. Uh, you know, go to Denny's here or you go to some high-end restaurant there and the print market is very similar in the sense that you're producing things appropriate for your clientele and their price point and what they can afford because they want an easy way, easy entryway into collecting work or uh, um, an affordable way to access the print market. And uh, you coming out, and I did, I had prints that were like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, they were more expensive than some of my small originals because my upfront costs were just astronomical and I found that was not a cost efficient way. Um, and then so uh, you find artists as well now printing uh, things and they're going to, you can go to a commercial printer, you can go to someone who specializes in uh, doing fine art prints and and, I've, and, and uh, when I talk to different artists about how they get their prints, they'll go, you know, some go to a print house, others go to a commercial printer. Some guys are printing stuff off color copies. I know guys that have their own large scale iris printers in their studios, uh, like photographers. I know a photographer, he could print a photograph uh, four feet wide and just keep going. I mean, he could print a he could print a photograph as large as one of my huge canvases, and then there are places that can do canvas editions. You can go. I know an artist who goes to Costco and prints photo photo reproductions, and the criticism is they're kind of blurry. Or, uh, but then you have to. The comment was after they're framed up, they look decent. But you know, it's a cheap way to uh, produce a cheap content where you can sell a print for. 20 bucks 25 dollars pretty inexpensively and anybody can buy that if they if they choose to um and then my prints tend to range i, I find 50 dollars and up seems to be a pretty comfortable place for a lot of my clientele i don't want them too cheap i don't want them too expensive so that's enough that it can, it's affordable uh but not where i'm giving them away and they're they have a diminished value uh because i worked really hard to build my market value in my brand so I don't think fifty dollars unreasonable for example here's my most recent print this is jam session you see that I put I had mine printed with a glossy coat kind of embellishes the sense of color that it looks like my paintings so excuse the hot spots that that's because of my uh, my track lights but you'll see here's where I sign it here in paint that's actually acrylic paint and then on the back of each print You'll see where I hand sign is in reverse because I'm doing it. So it's not like this uh, normally, but this is how it looks because of I'm doing um, got it on a selfie mode. So, but basically, it's a jam session, uh, McRae 2019, and just showing in reverse. But there we go. So that's my print. I put it on really high quality paper. It's like thunder and lightning, doesn't it? Because it's not cheap, flimsy paper. Good stock. It'll hold up. It'll last a long time. Frame it up. It's 18 by 24 inches. Can easily go in a ready-made frame. And one of the issues always with anything on paper is framing cost. And you don't want your collector to have to spend five times what they paid for the print to frame it. Only person getting rich is the framer. The consumer's losing out. And the, the artist is losing. And the framer's getting rich. So... Here's a way we can have a uh, unique work, fine quality, and, and at a reasonable price, and as well be able to frame it at a, at a reasonable price. I'm always thinking about the consumer uh, when I'm, I'm launching out with these new projects. And, and Jam Session is, I think, the fifth print in my new series of 18 by 24 inch uh, prints. I did a Sunday, Welcome to Raleigh, Raleigh Skyline and now jam session so that's my fourth yeah and i got a fifth one coming out uh which is uh central sunset and we're having a problem getting the color correct on that so i apologize to anyone who's still waiting uh and i'm not uh who's 
done pre-order. It's not going to flim flam you out of your money. That's not it. That's not a issue at all. It's more so getting the quality right. So you're pleased and I'm pleased. So um, I want to always give my consumer and my collectors quality. Uh, I'm always protecting the brand and I'm always good protecting uh, my customers' interests because I always want my collectors to, and my patrons to be happy uh, with anything I, that comes out of McRae Studios. Uh, so back to printing as a whole, you have to search out and be willing to make mistakes and try different things and say, well, this, this process, I end up with too many prints. This process may be too expensive uh, for me to print these things on a regular basis uh, or, you know, the quality is it here or the quality is too high. Um, you got to you gotta get out there and try different things and experiment and don't be uh, afraid to uh, make mistakes or have a trial and error process. Um, some artists are printing stuff on canvas. I have not done canvas editions uh, personally because I don't want to uh, muddy the waters between what's an original Eric McRae canvas and a reproduction. Not to say I will never do it, but at this time that's an issue. I don't want anybody to uh, have the misconception they have an original or uh, someone that is projecting that they have an original and they have a reproduction and diminishing the value. So I'm always protecting the value of the art that other people, uh, my uh, patrons and my collectors have already invested in. So, cause I'm always trying to build the value of my work. So producing prints is not to diminish my value. So everyone who has the original from one of my prints, um, re in reality, I've increased the value of that unique work by making it more popular, well-known, and, a, and a, a, a recognizable work. That somebody will may one day want the original and try to get their hands on it. So um, the prints that I'm now uh, launching uh, in the effort to make my work more accessible and have greater scalability. So to you artists out there who are um, getting want to get into the print market, Look at different printers in your community. Uh, you might be surprised. You can go online, there are different printers. You can upload content. They'll send it, print the contents, uh, send proofs, uh, send you the original work, and ship it right to your door. Uh, other places, uh, you can go through, uh, I think Amazon also just has some kind of printing, uh, I think, a Create Space. Um, you can go to your local, you know, mom and pop printer around the corner. You made some big, huge print house. A lot of these like, folks have pretty much the same equipment. It just doesn't matter how skilled they are at using it and their quality control. And then you have to be uh, savvy enough to know the difference. Um, also, uh, for you out there who are looking to collect, now I've spoken to the artists and the business people, but now you as, as the collector out there says, hey, you know, I always wanted some of your, your artwork and I can't afford it, you know, I'm young or I'm starting out. I can't afford a $5,000 painting. Matter of fact, um, Jam Session is from a painting, it's $1,800, that painting's still available. Um, but he says, well, I, I want something that represents you in my home. And, and I think the print is the perfect way to do it. Um, just make sure you're buying stuff that's on quality paper, uh, the colors are accurate. Um, there's a difference between different types of prints. That's what you would call with a, a, a simply just a poster. Somebody may print up something on a really flimsy paper and make that available, or it may be nice paper, but it's just you know simply a poster, like you see at the art museum of a Monet, and it has Claude Monet at the bottom, and so forth. Those really seldom appreciate in any value, so they're just pretty for aesthetics and just uh, a memento. Um, and you may find certain posters by artists like Peter Max, those things appreciate value. And then there's the, uh, the signed print or signed poster. Somebody may sign it and they just put a signature on it. It gives it a, another value. And then you go to what's called a limited edition. So someone says, I'm going to take this image. I'm only going to print 50 of them or 100 or 500 or 5,000 or 10,000. But they've, they've, you know, more, more prints obviously the less value it has individually. Uh, less, lesser editions of prints have more value per individual unit of print. So say Jam Session is an open edition print because it, I feel that it will continue to sell for an extended period of time and, and that it's something that I think has a great enough appeal that I could continue to make it available for uh, uh, as long as somebody has interest in the work of Eric McRae. Uh, but then I have some prints that are 
you know, limited edition. I only did 50 of them or 100 and it's signed and numbered and, and that's as, as all this going to be done. So you have to look at that as a possibility too. And when you look at the price of the sale of the piece and the value of the piece. So that's from the producer as well as the consumer as the artist and also from the collector is looking at open edition versus limited edition, signed versus unsigned, all those things go into play. Uh, most of my prints, all my prints are signed. Uh, questions whether they're open edition or limited edition. My Raleigh Skyline image is an open edition. I have a print called Sunday. It's only 50 of those were printed and they've sold very well. Um, and I will print, produce more of those. And eventually I may get into more fine art printing, like maybe some silk screens, some things like that I'm considering, uh, but that's not a priority right now. Um, so I think that in a nutshell covers the, the whole idea of what printing uh, uh, or making prints is about, the history somewhat. Now I'm talking about from the 1980s. We're not talking about 500 years ago. You know, Rembrandt was a, it was a prolific uh, 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 printmaker and he did lots of etchings and his etchings were the inexpensive way for his collectors uh, back then to collect his work versus his originals or his drawings so the same concept went into play you look at Edgar Degas who was a big printmaker same thing you had Degas paintings his sculpture his his pastels and then you had his different prints his lithographs and his etchings and so forth and those were more inexpensive and reproduced um, that image for, for multiple collectors um, and now in this digital era we're able to do you know one it you, you go, go to your printer and get a really high-end printer in your house like a, a Epson printer Epson's a great photo printer uh, print uh, it makes uh, it has archival quality inks you can get archival quality papers and you can print small editions uh, from your desktop at home um, but as the consumer you have to make sure somebody's not selling you something that's gonna fade away and be aware of that my stuff has really high quality inks as well as very sturdy paper um, so it's not going to deteriorate fade away so forth um, so all that goes into play so I'm talking about the di current digital era for you as the artists out there uh, just don't be hesitant to get out there and experiment and take risk uh, just asking me where I speci specifically get my prints done is not your answer your answer is what works best for you when it's time for you to make prints or reproductions of your work you have to do the homework and find out what your clientele because my clientele is not your clientele there's an artist over here he may be printing 10,000 prints i have no need for 10,000 prints it's so a guy over here may only need to print 10 because his uncle wants one his grandma wants it and a few neighbors i'm not in either extreme it's not just a few family friends and it's not that i have a a global distribution network of people that want my prints all over the world. I mean, you know, you get these guys who do Civil War prints and uh, mass-produced stuff that goes online. I mean, they're printing hundreds of thousands of images. I mean, they're just cranking out stuff like a machine. I'm not, I'm not, and I have no interest in that. And that's not where I am. So you have to do your homework, take the time, go online, uh, look at different printers. Um, and then, oh, here's another thing. It's something, uh, sites like Cafe Press, Redbubble, uh, Zazzle. Um, they have uh, art, it was like Art in America. Um, you can upload your images and then they will have a, they have a library, a, a portfolio, a, a house of a, a storehouse of images that they're now selling to consumers. It's really not based off of you as much as somebody wants a painting of this and that. You come up in their search engine and they're selling your images to whomever in the world. And I've done that through Zazzle. And I have prints that sold in Mexico City, London, Paris, uh, all around the United States because somebody responded to the image who didn't have any idea who I was. So, and then I was paid a royalty off of the sale of that image. So now I'm licensing the image to a company to then sell the work. So they take care of the customer, they have the website, they handle the, the transaction, they deal with customer service, they print, they pack, they ship. So only you're providing the image, the content, that they're now mass producing or they're selling, well not mass producing, but they're selling to individuals. So someone says, I want a picture of this, this image. 
of whatever, a landscape, an abstract, a picture of a boat, whatever. Somebody somewhere in the world goes on his website and says, oh, I like that. I want one this particular size. And then when it's printed and processed and shipped and sold and shipped, um, I will receive a royalty. You could potentially receive that same royalty if you choose to use one of those type of companies. So it's the, the possibilities are so broad, and especially to your young artists who are starting out, and that's a great way to get your work seen and make some revenue from your artwork. Um, so you ask five different people, they'll probably tell you five different things. So you have to do your homework. You gotta get out there and look at all the options and see what works best for you. So. Um, all right, well, if this content is, uh, you find it beneficial, uh, please share it with your friends, other artists, uh, share it on Facebook, Twitter, whatever social media platform you'll see this content. I'm going to place this on Instagram, um, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube. You go to my YouTube channel, uh, ericmcray.com. Uh, my website, uh, my YouTube channel is uh, uh, Eric McRae. Uh, you can see my vlog post there, so this content will be there, and there's a whole, I think I have about 90, 89 or 90 different vlog posts I've done, so feel free to share that content. Please take time to subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, and you also have my McRae Studios page on Facebook, and also Eric McRae on Facebook, and you can find me under Eric McRae also on LinkedIn and on Twitter under um, McRae Studios. So all this content is going to be floating out here on the web. Make sure you share it. And if you find it beneficial, make sure you subscribe. Keep in touch and take care.